Great. Welcome to uh, All Things in Toto. I am Santiago Torres. Uh, I work at Purdue University. I'm an assistant professor and I do research on software supply chain security. That is, I care about how software is made securely and I care about how software is consumed securely. And here's my colleague, Marcella. Hi. <laughs> I'm Rosal Malara. Um, I'm a research scientist at Intel Labs. Uh, yeah, my current research focuses mostly on uh, software supply chain security, but more generally distributed systems and security. So uh, this is right up my alley as well. Should we get started? Um, so we want to sort of set the stage and common language to talk about the software supply chain, software supply chain security. Um, so we're gonna start with some basics, right? The software supply chain, the way we see it, the way Intoto sees it is a collection of all the systems, devices, organizations, actors, individuals that are involved in producing a software product. So, a supply chain attack is essentially a compromise of any one of those elements of the software supply chain, any one of those components, um, and in particular, when they take advantage of, of a weakness. Um, the common goal, of course, then being uh, some sort of uh, alteration or modification, mostly malicious, to the final product. Um, and we always like to point out this very uh, kind of impressive statistic, right? Um, over the course of three years between 2019 and 2022, um, Sonatype essentially identified um, the rate of growth, right, of software supply chain attacks. And over this three year span, right, a 742% growth is astronomical. So this really is a very crucial problem, um, right? And so we can point out a few different examples. Some of you may be familiar with these. Um, SolarWinds is probably the one that most folks here have at least heard of, right? Um, the SolarWinds hack, to be very specific, right? SolarWinds being a company that, um, even though they had open source software and a lot of these security uh, measures in place already, right? Uh, they still had a loophole or, or a weakness in their uh, supply chain that was then um, taken advantage of by attackers. So to address all of these issues, right, there's kind of a growing ecosystem around this problem. And we bucket the solutions into three main areas, um, evidence gathering, information discovery, and policy or validation. Um, and we've highlighted a few of the CNCF and OpenSSF projects that are sort of making headway in the space. You're probably familiar with at least some of these. Um, in Toto in particular has also seen a lot of integrations and adoptions in the recent years. Um, so these are the projects specifically in the CNCF. Uh, then in OpenSSF, there are several standards that are emerging here. And um, this is sort of more broadly in the ecosystem. And these final ones that were popping up are really uh, sort of Intoto friends, as we call them, right? These are the adopters of the Intoto uh, standards and, and tooling so far. And then finally, most recently, I think this has been within the last year, right? Um, NPM and GitHub, for example, we like to highlight especially because they have sort of really um, adopted and integrated Intoto at a much larger scale, right? NPM being the largest package management uh, service and GitHub, right, being one of the largest um, CICD services. So working together has really sort of expanded um, the, the reach of, of Intoto, really. So I'm gonna hand it off to Santiago now. So by now you may be, a, <laughs> you may be convinced that Intoto is involved in all of these different initiatives that you may recognize and that Intoto is probably a fundamental part of this software supply chain security problem, but may, you may be asking yourself, what is this Intoto thing anyway? And well, 
In total, really, is a way to talk about how a software product is made and to see, essentially, every single step that was carried out. The way that Intoto works is that it allows you to wrap all of these different technologies that you're familiar with. If you're familiar with Salsa, well, you can use Intoto to communicate Salsa predicates. In the slide that you're looking at right now, it looks a little bit daunting, but really what, what it really means is Intoto allows you to bind information from software supply chain predicates, like in the, bo in the bottom we have a a subject, for example, an S-bomb, well, a subject, uh, for example, a container, and a predicate, for example, an S-bomb. We're saying, I am, I am attaching this S-bomb to this particular artifact in the software supply chain so that you know that this S-bomb is associated with this particular container. It also allows you to do other things, such as uh, authenticate that particular uh, like attachment so that you know that the person who is attaching that S-bomb to that container is the person that you trust to attach that S1 to that container. Well, this allows us to do a, sort of like a very simple graph construction. We're building the supply chain through its evidence. So in this case, for example, we are able to allow all of the people that are producing our piece of software, in this case, say a Debian package, to produce attestations as the things are moving forward. And eventually, using a policy language, whatever you're uh, more familiar with or more inclined to use, OPA, Q, you can look at all of those attestations and say, well, is my package packaged by the packager? <laughs> is my uh, software written by the developer? Is the build system that I'm using the one that should be building this uh, binary to begin with? Is my Travis CI deployment actually running the tests on the same software that was put in my package, or is it running tests on something else? And through this, then we're able to get a very sort of highly granular, very visible understanding of how the software is made. Now, all of these little pieces of evidence that we were uh, looking at just earlier, these are called attestations, and they are they're essentially little atoms of how the software uh, supply chain is uh, connected together. We also call these predicates. These predicates, again, allow us to talk about different properties of a subject. And the subject, for example, is any piece of software or intermediate piece of software in our, in our software supply chain. So I don't know if you noticed, but this really does look like a grammar. And this is not a coincidence. We're trying to answer and ask questions about the software supply chain so that we can better determine how much we trust the piece of software. Questions that you can ask yourself uh, is things such as how solar winds so, uh, solve the solar burst compromise. This is uh, blatantly stole from their white paper. I hope they don't sue me. But uh, this really uh, lets us get some visibility in how really they, they took a look at this problem, the largest uh, compromise in the history of the United States, and how do they think they will solve it using Intoto. Essentially, what they're doing is they're using two pipelines. One of them is in a completely isolated environment with a completely different stack that is rebuilding the software. The claim here is that if these attestations and the other attestations that are coming from the, from the production pipelines agree on the result of the binary, then the likelihood of a backdoor being in the build system is very low, right? This means that the hackers should have broken not only into the production environment, but in some other siloed, isolated verification pipeline that they put in a different location such as the case of Datadog, that they also build somewhat of a more linear pipeline to verify how software traverses their supply chain. At the very left-hand side, they hand out a hardware uh, security module to every developer, and they use it to automatically sign every single release that they are producing. When that uh, release is pushed into the CI-CD system, then the CI-CD system also produces a bunch of different attestations. They, you can think of this as Salsa attestations. Um, I don't remember if these are actually Salsa. Uh, but you can then bind these two things together. The, the developer actually produced the software uh, that is being built right now, or is it building something else? Finally, when you get to download, the agent that's running in your infrastructure will download these two attestations, and then it will do a couple of checks. The first one is, did I download the thing that's a subject in the latest attestation, and the other thing that's actually very interesting, can I go all the way back to the original uh, source code, the Python files that I found, and match them to the developers that are building this software in the New York Times building in the Datadog office using a hardware token? 
So that way, they know that no single line of code was introduced, nothing was really modified by the, by the CI. The CI is really just running the tests and packaging the software. Another example that I wanted to highlight is, and it's something that's uh, really exciting to me, is how can you combine Sixth or Salsa and Intoto to bind GitHub Actions and NPM? The way that they do it is really on their workflow, they have their NPM uh, GitHub Action authenticate the, the runner and then spit out a Salsa attestation that's being signed using Sixth Door to answer the question, well, is this GitHub uh, like action the one that produced my piece of software or, the, or did somebody try to replace uh, the NPM package on the registry by building it themselves in a different computer? These are not all the questions that you can answer or ask within Toto. You can ask very simple questions like uh, who did what? Who was the developer that did this particular change? Or who changed which particular uh, container? Which tools were they using? Where are they running these tools? And is this what they should be doing to begin with? Is their CI configured in the proper sort of like way? You may have also noticed other tools that can produce attestations today. We have a very sort of a rich uh, integration environment. Trivi, for example, can spit out both an SBOM and I think a vulnerability scan attestation that then you can attach and ask yourself, does anybody, did anybody run a vulnerability scan in this container before I admitted it, admitted it into the cloud? When did they run it and what was the result of it? Salsa is probably something that you're very familiar with and you can answer the question, how was this particular uh, software product built. And well, a little bit more loosely, can you ask yourself, did somebody run the tests? Did they even pass? Or was there a runtime trace? Essentially showing me evidence of this container running in an isolated environment when it was building this, this piece of software. And really anything that you could collect throughout the software supply chain, the idea is that we want to push that forward and verify it. Take everything from the left-hand side to the right-hand side to verify properties of the software supply chain in both a cryptographically strong, but also in a automatic operationalized uh, fashion. Actually, something I'm very excited is uh, Intel donated some code to the Intel framework that allows us to answer a, even more complicated questions than the one that I had just now. And Marcel is going to show us. Sure. So uh, this is really a uh, overview of the demo that I'm about to show you. So the idea here is when Mary the maintainer submits a pull request to a Git repo, um, right, this is uh, the CICD pipeline, um, and specifically if you're using GitHub, um, the GitHub Actions workflow will trigger the build, generate um, the build output, right, your artifact or container, whatever it is that you're building, um, and in addition, also the metadata. Um, that is required to generate the Intoto attestations. Um, thanks to work that I've done and with the Intoto community together, as well as uh, prior work, right, from other communities and other community members, um, we then sort of, again, through the CICD uh, workflow, can actually sign and upload these attestations to the six store uh, transparency log and, um, right, uh, verify the inclusion proofs, get those artifacts, get the attestations on Camila, the uh, customer side, and verify that the software artifact is actually um, compliant with our expectations, with our policies, using the attestations that were generated during the build and signed by uh, Mary's organization. So um, as Santiago was alluding to, um, Part of what we want to spotlight in this demo is the SKY predicate or the supply chain attribute integrity predicate, which essentially um, seeks to bind uh, explicit attributes about any aspect of the software supply chain to evidence of these attributes. Um, and there's a few more fields in this predicate. I'm not going to walk through the JSON today, but um, you hopefully get the idea that um, we are able to not only generate data, but start um, sort of deriving meaning from this data, right? And for verification purposes. So 
Uh, the sort of questions we seek to answer in this demo are uh, including, um, was the bill tampered with, right? Was a legitimate version of the source repo used? These are questions that the salsa provenance can answer. Um, did the build produce an SBOM? Did the build produce salsa provenance? These are the types of questions that the Sky predicate can then, in addition, answer. So for this, um, I will, you can see my screen, yes. Break out of here. So I will. A drum roll. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there isn't anything actually live running right now. Um, this build um, takes about 30 minutes, so I'm not going to have everyone sit and wait for that. Um, but essentially, so this is um, a fork from a team project at, um, that my team maintains at Intel, um, private data objects. Um, we build several containers for a distributed system type application um, and smart contract type application. Um, and what I really want to showcase here is the SBOM generation for one of our containers, the client container in this case. Um, we generate the uh, various information that we need for the salsa provenance, um, in addition to um, a few extra sort of logs and, and whatnot. So after that, um, right, the workflow, right, here's our build. Here's the stock salsa provenance GitHub generator workflow that I was able to just plug into my workflow and generate salsa provenance with, um, and kind of um, just as part of this, this tool, um, we are able to generate uh, sort of six door signed uh, in total attestations uh, that have the salsa provenance predicate in them. And so if we go over here, um, Yes, you can sort of see this is the actual record log that was generated for this build. Um, and here's a salsa provenance uh, attestation that you can verify, you can check against, um, obtain the signature from. Um, and so then similarly, um, we built a similar workflow um, for Sky. So these are available um, at our uh, Sky demos and Toto repo, and here our idea is to generate um, what we call attribute assertions, and what these are really just sort of individual mappings between attributes and evidence files. And so, as you can see here, we're generating um, an assertion saying that yes, we have salsa provenance. Um, generating an assertion saying yes, we generated an S bomb, and our workflow will sign off on this again and upload it to Sixstore, um, much in the same way that the Salsa GitHub generator does that. So again, we can walk over here to our Recore log, um, find, for example, the inclusion proof for um, our Sky attestation, um, and if I pop this open, um, we can see here, this is our client container uh, commit over here. Um, and uh, here we have the has SBOM, uh, has salsa. And I'm also asserting that, well, this container was not built hermetically. I'm not going to go into what that means, um, but we can talk about that later. So essentially, um, what's kind of important to point out here is that our evidence is the JSON blob that we generated, or JSON blob. Um, yes, our JSON file that we generated, and uh, for, similarly for our salsa assertion, we're saying, yep, here's the um, provenance that we generated, right? So if we go back to um, our workflow summary, right, we'll see, hey, here's all of the artifacts, including our um, SPDX file, um, our signed Sky attestation, and so forth. So that's on the generation side. On the verification side, um, let me pop this back for a second. Right. Um, there is um, steps five and six that need to happen. Um, I'm just going to point out that for the sake of brevity and making sure that the demo goes smoothly, um, I will not be showing steps five and six today. Um, 
but these are kind of important steps to do this pre-verification essentially on the authenticity and integrity of the attestations coming from SIGSTOR against what it is that you get from your uh, GitHub workflow. So I'm going to be showing step seven next. So I open up my shell and I wish uh, I had... Is this font size readable or should we make it a little bigger? It's good? Okay. Thanks, yeah. So if we look at our attestations, we have our build attestation and evidence collection attestation. These are essentially the salsa and sky attestations. This is how the Intoto attestation verifier consumes them, so I needed to rename the files. And then similarly, if we look at our evidence files, uh, one of the um, evidence files for one of our sky assertions is that same salsa attestation, right? So, um, I'm going to just run the verifier for a particular layout. So the layout is the Intoto, essentially the Intoto policy definition. Um, and we can go over that in a moment. Um, but essentially, this uh, tool performs a whole host of verifications, right? We are um, checking the signatures on our attestations. We are evaluating policy rules on each predicate in the attestation once we verify the signature and essentially just making sure that every single rule applies, right? Um, in this case, yay, verification was successful. Um, and if I cat the layout, um, again, I'm not going to go through all of this, but over here, right, we have our functionaries. These are the signers. We have all of this key information. Um, and th so here we have the build step that generated the salsa provenance. And then down here we have the evidence collection, which generated the assertions about our build step, right? So um, you might see our rules down here say, you know, we want to make sure that our attestation says that. Uh, we had a salsa provenance or SBOM generated. So then we run our sky generator or sky gen check evidence tool to essentially check one at the evidence in one attestation against that particular actual evidence file. Um, this is a slightly shorter check. The idea is to eventually integrate this into the attestation verifier. Um, as part of, of that flow. Um, but what we're doing here is really just, um, what did I call it? Oh, my apologies there. It's essentially checking our uh, Sky Intoto attestation against this particular policy and against the salsa provenance file, right? In this case, we just want to make sure that yes, our Intoto um, our Sky predicate has the right um, attributes that we're being that are being asserted, and a couple of um, sort of uh, additional fields and attributes instead of our salsa provenance, which again is our our evidence here. So um, that concludes the demo. Hopefully, that demonstrates. Um, kind of clearly what is going on here. Um, and yeah, handing it back to you. Okay, so with this, uh, in this demo, you saw really the power of, uh, of Intoto. You can check not only that Salsa exists, but that Salsa is up until a certain level and that there's evidence to support that the Salsa level that you actually recorded matches uh, the Salsa level that you expected. Now, Intoto is, it's a community project, and we're not just doing a marketing pitch, but we want to also talk about how you can participate, become part of the community, and pretty much help us grow this project that really, to secure all the software supply chain, we need to cover the whole supply chain. So in total, it's really a specification with uh, a series of implementations and uh, a process to enhance uh, the in total specification. These are called uh, in total enhancements. What I mean with enhancement is if you have an idea of a way to improve in Toto, you can talk to us and we can encode this. This is heavily inspired by pretty much anything that ends with EP in the open source world. 
the enhancements then are floated back into an implementation, and we try to keep this uh, ecosystem steadily growing to both uh, sandbox certain uh, experimental features, but also to support pretty much people that have been using in total for, I don't know, four years already. Uh, the major implementations that, are, that we have are Python, which is usually our stable implementation. This is the one that, uh, that we try to pretty much fix security issues, but not add uh, any, any sort of like weird uh, new features. And then we have the Go implementation, which is the opposite. It's pretty much bleeding edge. It's the one that we use to test new features. We also have implementations in Java. This is mostly used for the Jenkins plugin. If you're using Jenkins, you can install an Intoto provenance generator. And the Rust implementation, which is used by another project called RebuilderD, which is heavily connected with the Reproducible Builds project. Uh, a way to verify artifact reproducibility is actually using Intoto to verify attestations about multiple builds on the same uh, piece of software. ITS, uh, again, are the way that we grow the community or grow uh, the feature set of Intoto. They're, uh, we're moving really fast. As a matter of fact, this slide is uh, outdated. ITS 9, 6, and 7, I think, are accepted. We have uh, 10 and 11 now that are uh, the ones that you saw in the Sky demo. If you have any, uh, any idea, really, uh, reaching out to the ITS maintainers, I am one of those, is the, is the best way to get the conversation going. Uh, the, whenever you hear attestation, even if it's in the like, South South attestation format, they're probably talking about this document. This is, uh, this is where attestations were first defined for Intoto, uh, and that's uh, how they inspired the sort of wrapper around South South. Uh, Intoto as a common language. Uh, again, what we're trying to do is accommodate all of the community, especially CNCF front projects, so that they can talk about the software supply chain or a particular software of the software supply chain uh, and fit it with a bigger picture of software supply chain security. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of attestations. It's still growing. If you have an idea for an attestation, for example, if you have a tool that you think could produce a piece of evidence that would help us uh, assert new information about the software supply chain, well, reach out to us. We're really, really excited to work with new communities and find things out. Uh, we're both scientists, so when somebody comes with something we didn't think about, we really laser focus on that, and we really love to hear uh, these perspectives. Uh, a lot of the predicates were actually not built in-house, but rather some tool was generating something that's useful for us to make a more secure software supply chain. So we brought them into the, into the conversation and then added support in, uh, in our implementations or, or directed people to use that uh, predicate as well. Something that does happen is that a lot of these uh, attestations can also help to define a common language between all of the tools. We have a lot of different vulnerability scanners. If we are able to determine a predicate that accommodates all different vulnerability scanners, then we are better able to write tooling to support Treaty and SIFT and really anything out there. To define your attestation formats, I, you need to reach out to the attestation maintainers. You can pretty much do what you saw on the slide before, which is open a pull request, have a couple of comments. We have uh, multiple stakeholders looking at this, uh, at this particular subset of the internal community to help accommodate and grow the predicate offering and also define sort of like best practices on how to use them. If you want to use Say Sky, we have a whole Sky demos repo that can help you verify things like, oh, if I wanted to use Sky to verify secure boot on a server, there's already a sketch of something you could, you could start playing with. Uh, I want to verify SASA level using a runtime trace or a Sky, uh, Sky at station, then there's also some code there that can help you visualize how it works. Well, to wrap up, and I think we are, yeah, we probably want some time for questions. Uh, we want to build more expressive policies. I 10 and 11 is what you saw on the, on the demo. And uh, what we're trying to finally close out is the loop of how do we produce all of this evidence from all of these tools, all of this, all of this CNCF projects and LF and OpenSSF projects, uh, collected using, uh, using all of the tools and then verifying uh, them at the time of deployment or pretty much just verifying uh, uh, at whatever time is, uh, is possible. The Intoto community is pretty much a thriving community of uh, people that are suggesting new ITs, people that are building tools, people that are building demos, people that are uh, maintaining the different implementations. Do reach out to us. We, uh, 
we will definitely find a home for the type of work that you want to do in the community. There's really a lot to do in order to accommodate this very like expansive goal. We have an Itoto community meeting at the first Friday of every month. So last Friday was the November one, but the December one should be in a couple of weeks. We're also in the CNCF Slack. We are also in IRC. It's not bridges, bridged, but if you want to do a, con a contribution and, holding the, and hosting the bridge, that would be great. Uh, a mailing list and also, of course, the GitHub uh, organization for you to reach out to. We also participate uh, in Google Summer of Code, so keep an eye on that. We usually have a lot of ways to onboard up and coming students into the organization. This started as an academic project, so a lot of uh, the mentoring will be done by both Purdue and NYU and the New Year's Institute of Technology. And I think that's it. We do have time for questions, right? We have yes, we do. about five minutes. So yeah, thank you. There has been, uh, and that's a great question. So I'll repeat it for the sake of Mike. Uh, so we show the happy path, right? You collect all of this, you verify it, it passes the policy, everybody's happy. But has anybody tried to look into a way to subvert this sort of attestation process so, so as to introduce a supply chain vulnerability, even though Intel is in place? Is that, so yes, uh, we, have been, we have been looking at it. There's a formal security analysis. We published a paper in, back in 2019. But more importantly, we had a third party security audit that was concluded earlier this year. Am I right? Earlier this year, I think like around March or so. I can't believe it's October, uh, November. <laughs> so uh, yes, they also found ways uh, to do it. And really it boils down to implementation aspects. Like there are some places in which you can introduce ways for the attester or the attestation code to attest for a lie. But uh, we have been do doing a lot of work to isolate these components, right? The thing that's actually carrying out the software supply chain action and the thing that's observing and rubber stamping the particular attestation. Yeah, if, I think we have time for a few more questions. Uh, yeah, sure. So one of the things I noticed in your demo was that um, it seemed like it would help uh, some of these assertions or attestations would help with SBOM discovery. They had kind of pointers to download locations of SBOMs. Uh, in addition, I recently was looking at the Security Insight CML specification, which also has a way to discover where to download SBOMs. And I know that SBOM discovery in general is like a pretty big problem. Would you see those two specifications maybe working together, or how would that, how do you think that, that that's going to work out? Um, very good question. Thank you. Um, I think they would probably be complementary. Um, I, I also think that uh, in Sky could probably express some of that uh, other uh, specification. Um, but in general, that is just one of the applications. So Sky is very specifically designed to be as general as possible. Um, so this just seemed like one of the sort of most straightforward um, applications uh, to aid with, like you're saying, SBOM discovery, attestation discovery in general. Um, and I don't know if anyone here is familiar with Guac, for example, but um, we're sort of trying to show here, right, if um, we were querying any kind of attestation database or attestation um, log, right, where we are retrieving some of these attestations or signatures, um, that we can actually generate an attestation about what this log is also telling us, right? So. Um, in addition to discovery, we're trying to also sort of add an extra layer of integrity to, to that. So um, I think it went beyond your question, but I think we have uh, time for one more. And a quick shout out to Archivista as well, uh, which is another Absolutely. project to help with discovery of attestations. It's really like optimized for asking anything about a piece of software and then telling you everything it knows. Uh, I think there's a booth on, uh, sorry. Uh, the name of the project is Archivista. Uh, yeah, uh, I think they have a booth. Uh, the company's testify sec in the in the pavilion. We have a uh, time for one last question. I think it needs to be quick. Yep. Well, I don't know if this is a quick question, but 
Um, I noticed that one of the steps that we skipped was step five of getting the actual um, attestations yes. for, the, for the resource. Um, and I'm curious what ecosystems have support for automating that because I know yeah. OCI has recently added that and NPM I think has added some of that, but are there other ecosystems that are integrating that right now? Yes, so um, the ecosystem that we've been exploring has been um, mostly the Sigstore Recore ecosystem. Um, unfortunately, they don't have strong support for actual attestation storage, right? They're primarily for signatures. Um, and so there's some quirks with the APIs and that kind of, um, those kinds of challenges, right, um, that we ran into. Um, so, um, but that's more sort of on the engineering. I think that's more an engineering problem than, than um, an ecosystem problem per se. Um, but I think, again, that's where a tool like Archivista could come in, which is tailored specifically towards um, storing in total attestations and, and SBOM and those kinds of metadata. Um, and so I think in lockstep with some of these other ecosystems, they could really uh, sort of work there and, and integrate, so. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.